Welcome to the Million Vegan Grandmothers podcast. And I am so blessed to have one of my dear friends, Jeff Francis, here today to talk about the art of veganism. And you know, Jeff, if you don't get enough of Jeff today, he will be on our convergence on the 5th and 6th of August, the Convergence of the People, speaking a little bit more about the art of veganism and, and what art can do. So Jeff is not only a visual artist, but he's a poet, he's a writer, he's a filmmaker. And I am just so blessed to have you. And a 50, is it 52 years vegan, Jeff? 52 years now, yeah. Wow. Well, take it away, Jeff. Talk a little bit about what art does and how it helps you process as a vegan through this world that is not vegan yet. Well, it needs to be, doesn't it? As Silesh says, it's, you know, and we've only got a, what, two, three years to reach his vision. But uh, I think what I'm about, and I'm guessing very much, well, I know what you are about, um, is communication. And uh, sorry, I thought you froze there. Um, okay, yeah, it's it's all about communication. That's what my life has always been about. Uh, that and uh, really the love of animals and nature. So that's what drives me. And uh, I've had all sorts of incarnations in terms of the way that I've tried to uh, express my concerns. I've done it in bureaucratic ways, working with the likes of Lynn McCartney and with in other ways uh, to uh, create visual images. Uh, and I do at many times believe in the idea that a picture is worth a thousand words. Uh, and it conveys emotion with it, obviously. Uh, and if you can combine pictures and some, some well-chosen sparse words and music, I think you're well on the way to, of getting inside people. And that's what we need to do. Uh, we need to waken compassion within as many of the uh, the rest of our species as we possibly can. So, and I believe that changes. That that is that there's an alchemy in there which can change other people. I'm always drawn to uh, the words credited to Leonardo, which is you know there are those who see, there are those who will see when they're shown. And there are those who will never see. And unfortunately, uh, that is the case. It was the case in his time and it continues to be the case now. But we've got to show as many people uh, to bring it to a tipping point where the majority are the ones who can see what is needed and why it is needed and then we can go forward and the world will will tip, it will change. That's what we have to believe at least. So I um, I just intimated that I was, uh, I've done a lot of work in campaigning for animals and uh, in my own life and in the businesses and things that I, I was involved with. Before I started working as an artist full time, uh, I was working with, with Lynn and uh, a couple of famous other people in this country. And then uh, before that, I was involved with um, creating my own vegan restaurant, one of the first ones in London in 1976. Uh, along the line, I got involved with creating uh, animus uh, badges and records, uh, which was the first animal rights uh, record label. So there was music involved with that. I wrote a single with uh, Captain Sensible in 1983, which basically 
told the story, it was called What No Meat, and it told the story of what uh, is now uh, accepted wisdom with regard to the reason that what the killing of our fellow creatures brings about within our society. And it, it for from then, which was what, 1983, I wrote that one with, with uh, Ray. And it was, we've been, I've been banging on about the link between the environmental uh, destruction and eating of animals. And lo and behold, now it's become, uh, you know, common wisdom, but it's, it took that long uh, for people to, to get there. So 40 years, basically, the best part of 40 years. But because I've been involved with creative, had been involved with creative people and had creativity uh, within my genes, literally, I became, uh, I reached a point where uh, the day, working with, with Linda, uh, the daily inhumanity of humanity uh, became too much. Uh, and I resigned after four years working for free for Animal Line. And uh, I thought, well, if I'm not gonna, if I don't paint now, I'm not gonna do it. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I started age 40, uh, becoming a full-time artist. And for the first 10 years, I really painted out all the, my concerns of what we were doing to the planet and, and to animals in particular. And then it, uh, it went on from there. So there's been another, uh, what was it, 33 years of doing that. So it's, it's quite, uh, it's been a, a, a good journey in as much as my love of animals has brought me in contact with some very, very special people. Some of them very well known and others of them just gorgeous people like yourself. So I'm, that's, uh, that's sort of my potted history. Although there are other things on the way, like a fro fro well, perhaps the first frozen food company, vegan fro frozen food company in uh, in England, uh, and the uh, the first uh, uh, yeah the first soap, the first cruelty free soap called uh, called Pacific Isle. And various other things. I think once it, it it's in you like a virus, uh, if you're concerned, and uh, that virus is always must out. You know that compassion, a virus of compassion, the disease of of compassion. So, um, why uh, why art? I think I've touched on it really. But it's such a necessity, and uh, but you, I have always changed chameleon-like in the way that I try and present it. I'm not in in preaching to the choir. Uh, other people uh, tend to do that, but uh, that's not for me. So, you know, it's been the songwriting, the poetry, the painting, the photography. All those things are aspects of uh, a way of ways of uh, getting through to people, and it's not always easy being in the avant-garde. But uh, one, uh, you know, it that's not the best place to be, uh, especially if you want to survive. But that's that's where I think I've been. And, and at the moment I'm working with uh, a wonderful produ American producer uh, who is a fantastic uh, pianist. And uh, we're looking at creating some other music that is very avant-garde in terms of the way it gets the message across. And we've just done this, uh, along with a few other people, we've just done this single uh, called The Waggle Dance, uh, where we are trying to get people to get involved in 
waggling uh, as per the bees. It's all about pollinators. It's all about uh, their decline, which is enormous. Uh, in the UK alone, 60% of the uh, insect life is gone in the last 20 years. And these things are important to our existence, but they're also clearly more important to the hive of uh, the biodiversity. So we've just done that, and I'm going to uh, encourage people to uh, go to bonobo.tv and uh, to look at it. Uh, you will find, if you go to Words and Music to Inspire Change, uh, you can click on the waggle dance you will find a whole um, a whole website that we've created uh, which is uh, called the importance of small things which i think we all should understand and uh, you will see the waggle dance and we're encouraging people to do it themselves uh, we can provide the, the soundtrack if you can't uh, pull it off yourself and do the dance, get yourself videoed and put it up on social media. And we want this to go viral now. So we want the grandmothers for sure out there doing it with their grandchildren. And I'm sure they'll love it. It's basically a piece of fun, uh, which hopefully will be almost a Trojan horse for those who haven't thought about what's happening to our planet and uh, to the to the small animals that are so vital uh, to it all and they will then go to the the website you can go to the website there's a lot of serious stuff there that you can read um it, the research has been done for you and uh, maybe you can uh, help us get compassion for the, the smaller things of life as well as the larger things Wow, beautiful, Jeff. So we can find this link on Bonobo TV. Bonobo.tv, yeah. Okay. Right. And, and you know what the bonobo is. It's our closest re relative, but it is a female-led society. So it's exactly appropriate for, uh, for uh, grandmothers and anything like you are running, which is... Uh, has compassion at its heart uh, because what happens with the bonobos is it, it's such a peaceful society it's the make love not war society and uh, it's the males when two troops meet the males cannot help it they've got testosterone in them they will display against each other and the, the females just go behind them sit together start grooming and eventually the males get bored and go and sit with them to become peaceful. <laughs> and that's how it needs to be. <laughs> Let women run the thing, especially the grandmothers, uh, you know, because they've got the wisdom and they've seen the madness and they can, uh, they can bring about the changes if people will listen to them. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful. And moving on to the grandmothers and integrating that in our art of veganism and the, and the veganism dances and all the ways that we express that we um, need to wake up fully, right? We need to wake up fully. One time when you and I were having a beautiful conversation about my grandchildren, my love for my grandchildren, they're not being raised vegan at this point, but the conversation is always going between them and I around veganism. You had said, I had had a dream. I was talking about these grandmothers. I wanted to gather the grandmothers. And you said, I think it's going to be a thousand grandmothers. There's going to be a thousand vegan grandmothers. You had this vision one day when we were speaking and, and I was telling Judy Carmen, you know, the author of Homo Ahimsa and a and longtime advocate like you, you know, activist and, and uh, Dr. Silas Rao. And they were like, no, it's going to be a million. It's going to be a million. Yeah. 
So here we are gathering the million vegan grandmothers and we have the access to unconditional love, you know, at a certain point, we're not out there fighting with our own, you know, testosterone and estrogen. And even though women were, you know, maybe born a little bit less competitive and understood the power of love and care. Uh, but we move into a, another phase of our lives. And that's the wisdom of seeing it all unfold. And understanding that everyone has their own contribution in that unfolding some people need to not be on the front lines i'm not a frontline worker i i don't do it well i was a social worker and i i uh, as an artist i need to express through art and love and food and and other people can manage the front lines i'm not saying anybody enjoys it but that's where their work is mm -hmm. and you it's in creating and and gathering people in the art of creating. And as you say, not preaching to the choir, but sometimes vegans gather together to express together, to deal with their own grief around being a vegan in a non-vegan world. And you seem to do it by gathering other artists together and creating. So how does that express and be able to dissipate some of the grief of being a vegan for 52 years in a non-vegan world, a, a world of normalized violence. It's, it's very hard um, not being depressed. In fact, almost it's, uh, it's like the Buddha's teachings, isn't it? I mean, one really ought to be depressed if you can see the world as it is. But in the face of that, you have to come through it. Now, my own way of dealing with, with the sadness that uh, is in the world uh, in terms of what's happening to animals and, uh, and the planet in general is to dive deep within those feelings and go down and bring up what I find there to show to the world. Um, and that's, um, that's the only way I can do it. But I'm, I'm very fortunate because over the years I have made a very few people that I can truly rely on, but I can rely on. And they also are very, uh, very generous in what they do uh, with me. So it's, we all work pro bono on the, on the various projects that we're doing. Uh, like that video is, you know, it's a friend of mine, Paul Windridge, who uh, has worked, got work in, uh, in Tate Britain and, uh, and also in the Metropolitan Museum of Arts and places like that. He made the video. He shot the video he, and I asked him and he, he shot, he went uh, from his home on the Isle of Wight and went down to uh, Weymouth and shot the video with, with uh, Vegan Queen V, um, who is absolutely brilliant, who, who basically wrote the song on the back of couple of ideas that were thrown together and then another friend who I've worked with over the years in the music business put to together the final mix and then we've got Darren who's a vegan working out of uh, Florida with lots of experience and I'm lucky that uh, I can be a catalyst in, in that respect uh, and I think all my artists can well no not all artists can but the sort of people that I've been lucky enough to to be involved with uh, can and uh, I think the work you will see that the work is is something special and the message is special in fact one of uh, a guy called Ray who uh, is part of the uh, climate healers when he was shown via someone else the website he just said it's gorgeous it's gorgeous so i i do encourage people to go and have a look at that you can tell i'm plugging this thing because it's just started and it needs to it needs to happen 
because the bees and all the pollinators who are much maligned really do uh, need that help. And if they don't get it, we don't survive. That's that's the uh, that's the bottom line of it all. You know, we're we're in dead, literally dead trouble at the moment. Uh, and attitudes do need to change. Hopefully, uh, by using art in all its various forms, uh, we can we can bring about some of those changes. And I know there's some very good people out there doing that. And interestingly, there's uh, a guy called Chris Hines, who is uh, making a film which he hopes will be on Netflix uh, about animal rights and music. And uh, he's managed to garner some amazing people like Moby and, and various other really well-known people to take part in this, this particular film. And that should be coming out later in the year. But Chris came to me uh, because we were the, the f apparently the first to set up a, an animal rights label. And uh, he, we did, the first album we did was with Country Joe McDonald. So even when I was working in a slightly bureaucratic way, I was still always tapping into art. And he's done an interview. We've, we've got a, um, a podcast ourselves uh, called uh, 50 Year Vegan uh, for the Love of All Things. And uh, that's on Anchor on Spotify and, and Apple. Uh, that uh, we, There's an interview with Joe and there's about three interviews with Chris talking about music and uh, animal rights. So I, your people uh, who, are, who are listening to this might well be interested in that too. So, and they'll get the deeper story. Yes. yes. So I encourage everyone to explore this area because, you know, one of the things they say uh, when interviewing vegans, you know, what, what was their catalyst? The majority of people said film, you know, watching a documentary changed their life, changed, mm. changed the trajectory and which way that they would go. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, that, it's interesting. I mean, I always say love of animals was the thing that kicked me into it, a uh, constant concern. And then I became aware of more things uh, that, uh, like veganism, leads on to an under so clearly the exploitation of animals in all sorts of ways but then the exploitation of human beings so you know in at the beginning of uh, the 80s i wrote a thing called, I, I set up an organization called enough after gandhi's the world has enough for everyone's greed uh, everyone's need sorry but not for greed and uh, these uh, then you, you have to look at wars and we know what's happening in various wars that are over water that are going on that uh, James Cameron has, ex has exposed in his various uh, documentaries. All these, these things tie together and that's what, uh, when I came to write, uh, do the, the lyrics for What No Meat, that was what uh, I was highlighting, all those various aspects of, of what we're doing and uh, their consequences. I mean, nobody these days seems terribly concerned about consequences um, of their actions. And it, it's, it's quite, uh, that's the, a very chilling part of what's, what's going on in the world is that nobody really wants to say it's their fault for anything that they've done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the grandmothers aren't just grandmothers for everyone that is vegan supporting the grandmothers, the grandfathers, yes. the elders of us all, the wisdom of us all. So please join, we have a YouTube channel and we would love to share some of your short videos, some of your information and some of your links on our YouTube channel. So. 
um, please let us know if if we can we can spread the news through. Oh. No, you're welcome to anything I've got. You, I, you've always known that. Anything that I've got, you can utilize. Yeah, and I think I think you should have. You know, I'm great. At the beginning, when we were talking about this, um, at the beginning of the vegan grandmothers, um, I was saying, you know, you need to have, like, say, there should be an honorary grandmother, and uh, the rest of us should be. And I, I remember uh, writing something for you about it and the idea that if you look at the elephants, it's the, gra it's the mothers and grandmothers, in fact, the grandmothers who hold uh, the whole herd together. Mm -hmm. And that, that wisdom that works on all sorts of levels within uh, nature should be uh, should be celebrated in totally whether you're gonna get I don't know there's a lovely lovely song uh, by Bill Withers um, called Grandma's Hands I don't know if you know it it's it's an absolute beauty it's on his live album um, which is it's a, a album, it's a, very inspirational, a lot of his stuff. But there's a thing, uh, a, this song, Grandma's Hands, and uh, there's a lovely introduction that he does. There's lots of people say to me, I love my grandmother too. And it's that sort of warmth and loving, and I can remember that with, with my own mother's mother. Um, you, If you've got that, and that warmth and that unconditional love, then you can uh, you can move forward, um, and you can understand. You get people to project that. You know, the hardest person will often uh, love their grandmother, even if if they didn't, they missed out a stage of of loving their mother or something. You know, they, their grandmothers have a hold a special special place. And that's what we need to venerate, absolutely. That, that whole feeling needs bringing through uh, the gentleness of it, you know. They weren't all Mar Baker, you know. You know that song? Mar oh, okay, sorry. Uh, you, you know that I come out with all sorts of uh, musical references. There was a song by Boney M about a, a famous uh, grandmother who was a killer, uh, basically. She had all her boy, brought up her boys to, to be killers. That, what I was just saying is not every grandmother is, is like that, and the very few are like that. They're just lovely, lovely, warm old things, as Bill Withers puts it. Mm -hmm. Well, I know you. you're a young grandmother, but you know, that uh, doesn't stop you being warm and cuddly. Oh, I so adore my grandchildren. And, you yeah. know, it was interesting. My grandson was saying the other day, we were talking about the power of food and sharing, you know, vegan, vegan food. And, and the, I have an ongoing argument with my son-in-law, a gentle argument, because we love each other deeply. And that's part of the grandmother. The true grandmother energy is unconditional love of vegans and yeah. non vegans. You know, they somewhere they were they were just following orders too. You know, as Dr. Will Tuttle said, they were just following orders, told to eat their meat and their yeah. and 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 drink the secretions to be strong. Now, I have this ongoing argument with my son-in-law through my grandson, and he's always telling me, you know, vegans can't be strong. The argument's kind of getting a little old so phoenix doesn't use it as often. but they love all the vegan food and and one of the ways yeah. that i'm able to live in my integrity is that when i take care of them i'm going to be leaving here shortly to take care of them today and we only yeah. have vegan food so they know the repertoire of the all the vegan food they're able to you know and phoenix was saying oh but do you remember he's six now when you used to put me on the counter before i could walk so we could make green juice and smoothies <laughs> yeah so he's reminiscing already about making food with grandmother, but it's not like yeah. the, 
it's not like bacon and eggs. It's like smoothies and green juice. And this is the new era of children are raising. You know, they're going to know how to take care of their body. They're going to know how to take care of their arteries. They're going to know how to take care of their hearts. They're going to be yeah. able to do that allows their hearts to be open and not this constant schizophrenic energy. I love animals, but I eat them, you know, like yeah. a message to send children. So the vegan mm. grandmothers are arriving to teach all the other grandmothers how to upgrade to where we are now, mm. you know, in a world of very quickly moving to normalized nonviolence. And in that, Jeff, you have been a vegan for very, very long. And there wasn't a huge amount of change in the number of vegans in the world. I mean, it stayed pretty, pretty steadily low for a long, long time. And maybe some of the hippies, you know, went vegetarian, which isn't enough, because we know that dairy cattle are some of the most terrifically abused animals. And the absolute squishing out of the feminine divine, you know, the, the rape and the babies taken away and all that. So it wasn't quite enough. And some of them, you know, went only vegetarian a few days a week when, or maybe even mm. Mondays when the big craze came. Now we're moving towards veganism and more vegans have been born this last born vegan. Some people have been born vegan. Yes. But the seed of veganism is finally sprouting and we have witnessed more vegan food, more vegan communities than we ever have what does that feel like after being vegan for 50 it, years? yeah i mean it it was very hard uh, initially um and certainly the restaurant was a real struggle despite the fact that it was right in the center of the west end of london you know uh, and it, it's a delight uh, for me i mean I, I i could give up now i could go retire altogether you know uh because uh, all the other people are, are doing it. But it's, yeah, there was just suddenly there's a momentum. I mean, where I'm staying in London at the moment is uh, is vegan central. Um, you know, you, you literally walk 50 yards around the corner and you'll find someone selling vegan food, which is absolutely brilliant. And, you know, I spend, uh, well, I'm, I'm a Portuguese resident. Um, and I was delighted the other day to see that uh, because they have a much smaller population, there's only like uh, 10 million people, but they reckon a million people are vegetarian and vegan in Portugal. That's 10% of the whole population. And you certainly do get serviced in the supermarkets with lots and lots of vegan stuff. Not so much the the um, restaurants, although I was lucky, the, the city that I moved to um, about four weeks before I got there, they opened a beautiful vegan restaurant, which carries my art. And at the moment, we've got a, a, a exhibition going on there for Sea Shepherd, who uh, are one of my favorite organizations. And all those guys are vegan, all the guys on the ships and stuff. Uh, they are, they're so brave. Uh, in, you know, they're just naturally brave individuals. I mean, when I've met them, uh, they just say, oh, the worst thing is if we don't have enough coffee on the, on the boat and stuff like that. But they do the most wonderful stuff. And I've the Country Joe album that I referenced earlier, that was done for to raise money for Sea Shepherd. So, uh, uh, it's it's still happening all the time. Yeah, well, I great. Thought, and I love Sea Shepherd, and we've had Paul Watson on our convergence a few times with Climate Healers, and right. I had heard that not all the ships were vegan at one point, and Paul was insisting that they become vegan. Is is that true? Yeah, as far as I'm aware, yeah, they're all all vegan. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, he's he's a a great human being, is Paul. It's, um, it's something I I did a poetry book for them, um, which you people can read if they want. They're all all my published work is uh, is free online now uh, through the bonobo.tv. Just go to the uh, 
to the uh, books section and uh, they're all there. And uh, yeah, it, it's, I like the book myself. It was inspired by um, a couple of lines from Leonard Cohen uh, from Suzanne, which is all men shall be sailors then until the sea shall free them. And it's called Sailors. Um, and, uh, it's, it's a tribute to these guys, but there's loads of quotes from Paul Watson in the back part of the book and lots of facts about uh, what we're doing to the, to the oceans. Mm, beautiful. Well, thank yeah. you, Jeff Francis, for all your work and all your dedication as you ushered in a vegan world. Because, you know, in three years, I think the majority of the world, or at least half of it's going to be vegan. And the ones that you said that will never change are going to have to come kicking and screaming. Because I believe that in our lifetime, Jeff, we will see a predominantly vegan world. Well, in your lifetime, sweetheart, mine might be a bit more difficult. <laughs> Oh, thank you very much for your time, Jeff. Oh, thank you, darling. That's lovely. And we can um, have access to the links below if you want to learn more about Jeff Francis and his work and all of his uh, work with so many other people that you may not know yet until you read a little bit and watch a bit. And thank you again, Jeff.